When I was younger, I used to go for ride-alongs with my brother-in-law in his patrol car. He taught me how to shoot a gun, and I learned a lot of the finer details of police work. Of course, I forgot a lot about it over the years. I mostly remember small things, such as you should always take off your sunglasses before talking to someone. However, one thing I will never forget is the day my brother-in-law, Jim's his name, told me how easy it is to get away with murder. At the time, I was under the impression that most murderers got caught. Jim said that the only murderers who get caught are the ones who make either one big mistake or too many small mistakes. One big mistake would be something like killing someone recently after a conflict with that person. It puts too much focus on you, and once the cops consider you a suspect, everything you do will be suspicious. You should instead make amends with that person in a documented manner and then carry out the killing. Having no motive takes police eyes off you and gives you time to cover your tracks if needed. In fact, Jim said, if you really wanted to kill someone and get away with it, you just kill someone you have no connection to. This is why serial killers don't get caught until having several murders under the belts. The police won't have a suspect until the killer develops an M.O. Other murderers get caught by making too many small mistakes. None of those mistakes alone will land you in jail, but together the mistakes add up and they tell a story that will convince the jury that you're the guilty party. That's exactly what happened with Alejandro Rojas. Let's start at the beginning. It's Valentine's Day, 2020. A great day for salal picking in the Olympic National Park. And for a certain group of salal pickers, it was perhaps the most memorable salal picking day in their lives, as they would come across the body of a deceased female. They immediately called the police, who arrived at the scene to gather evidence, and at the scene, the police find a small handful of items, likely related to the murder. Items including a small blue folding knife with blood on it, a red folding knife, and a broken tequila bottle. The female's body was noted to have lacerations on her neck and arms, consistent with being cut with a knife, as well as blunt force trauma to her face and her head. There were no items that could be used to identify the victim. The closest sign of civilization relative to the victim's body was the Seven Cedars Casino. Detective Jeff Waterhouse, who will perform amazingly in the interrogation you're about to watch, contacted the Seven Cedars Casino, which, being a casino, has a dedicated surveillance team. Detective Waterhouse described the victim's appearance and requested surveillance to see if they could locate the victim in any footage. The casino eventually located the victim, making a purchase inside the casino's gas station. The victim... Prior to entering the gas station, alighted from a red truck, and later, from the same red truck, a man alighted, entering the same gas station, and he too was clearly caught on CCTV cameras. The man and woman remained in the truck from about 5.30 p.m. to 12.30 a.m., at which point the truck left the gas station. Because the casino's surveillance team was of high quality, the truck's license plate was clearly captured on the CCTV footage, and police were able to trace the truck to an Alejandro Rojas, who was monitored for a few days while the detectives built their case. Alejandro made a number of small mistakes, but the police did not have definitive evidence to convict him. They needed a confession, and for that, they sent in one of the best interrogators I've ever seen, Detective Jeff Waterhouse, who will coax Alejandro into making a number of mistakes that will put his freedom in jeopardy. These are the mistakes you need to avoid if you want to get away with murder. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate it. You guys have fun. Catch you in a bit. Thank you.
So Alex, um, mm -hmm. I'm Ted Howell with uh, FBI. Mm -hmm. Because our missing persons from out of state, we got roped into helping okay. out. We're coordinating some of the interviews down in California. So. Mistake number one, killing on federal land. Three days after the victim's body was discovered, the Clallam County Police Department, which was handling the case, received a phone call from California regarding a missing person. The person matched the appearance of the victim, and the FBI agent here is claiming that because the victim was out of state, the FBI then became involved. However, this is not the case. In fact, even the internal police documents state that the FBI became involved because of the victim being discovered on federal land. Had Rojas committed the murder elsewhere or hid the body on commercial state or residential land, the FBI would not be assisting with the investigation. Ideally, you do not want the FBI involved in your murder investigation as they have near limitless resources. In contrast, Clallam County is small, with a population of under 80,000 people. Naturally, this sort of police department is much less well equipped than is a large metropolitan police department, which would also be more experienced in handling murder cases. It naturally follows that a murder would be better off being investigated by a small police force than a large one. And this is doubly true when you throw the FBI into the mix. Tricking the FBI is a monumental task compared to tricking a small town sheriff. In this particular case though, Clallam County was very much a bad place to commit a murder, as Detective Jeff Waterhouse is clearly a big fish in a small pond. This detective is probably one of those guys who's constantly offered promotions and transfers to bigger and better positions, but rejects them just because he likes his current place of work or he has other reasons to stay in his current residence. There's always the chance that you have a dark horse SSS class detective in a small town police department. Thus, before you commit a murder, it's best to look into the police force that handles that area. So look at the background of the detectives and the number of cold cases the department has. Choose an easy opponent for the aftermath of your murder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically we've been doing a lot of stuff and um, all over the place and we finally had a chance to come like out like, like yeah. here. So we've been doing recorded interviews with everybody and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, do you have your ID on you, Alex? Yeah, be good. So because um, you're in a police station, that kind of thing, um, we have to go over your rights with you, but we'll go over that in a minute. I mean, everybody's done it. We've mm -hmm. done it with everybody. We put it on the recording, what have yeah. you. Um, are you okay with us recording the interview? Is that, is, is that okay? Just like video and audio, is that cool? Uh, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, you have to be doing it with everybody. It's been kind of standard mm -hmm. practice. So give me a second here and let me get to right, and it's going to take me just a second, okay? Uh, yeah. And is your address on here correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's 2712 mm -hmm. Southeast 16th? Okay. And do you go by Alex? Oh, uh, yeah, Alex. Okay. Just want to make sure. Your last name is Ag Ag Aguilera mm -hmm. Rojas. Is mm -hmm. that hyphenated? Okay. What's your date of birth? Uh, zero eight twenty four ninety six. Get back out working tomorrow again too. Mm -mm. No, not well, you guys scare the lady. Oh really? Yeah. Oh man! She told us not to go back until Friday. Yeah. Hey, so sorry about that. That is, <laughs> oh funny. man. Yeah, that was a kind of a weird scenario yeah. like earlier. I'm like, how do you, how, how does she know who I am? I could be anybody. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Can yeah. you say anything to kind of smooth things out with her? Um, they pretty got pretty freaked out. Yeah, so oh, the rest of after you guys left, he pulled up like 10 minutes later. And he oh, really? Got, you, you, guys, you guys can leave now. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, if there's anything we can do to talk to them and let them know that, hey, you know, mm -hmm. he's not going to get in trouble. We're, yeah. just, you know, we're talking all the mm -hmm. people in this case. We'll be glad to, if you think that would help. So just let us know afterwards. And Sorry, it's paid for, yeah. man. Sorry. Let's see here. 
what kind of stuff are you guys doing there? Is it um, pretty much uh, mowing whatever, new drywall, pressure washing, roof. Got great yeah. weather today. Mm -hmm. for yeah, all that stuff, man. All right, Alex, here's your driver's license back. So, so like I said, I've been over rights with, with everybody. We video mm -hmm. like everybody just because of everything going on, yeah. okay? So I'm, I'm, I'm going to go over that with you right now. And just keep in mind, your rights never go away, okay? Ever. Um, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in a court of law. You have the right at this time to talk to a lawyer and have him present with you while you're being questioned. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you for questioning if you wish. You can decide at any time to exercise these rights, not answer any questions, or make any statements. Uh, you're not a juvenile. I've written my name in here, Waterhouse. Mm -hmm. um, so first part is I just read you your rights. Um, that's it. If I can just have you sign here indicating that I read you your rights and you understood your rights. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Let's see here. Let's do this. There you go. Trying to make some room here. Sorry. There you go. So it would be just right here, and this is just me reading your rights to you, and you understand those, okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. So sorry about that. You cut this off. It always happens, yeah. doesn't it? Every freaking time you're trying to do something. All right. So, waiver of rights, I have read or read to me the above explanation of my constitutional rights. I understand what my rights are. I'm willing to make a statement and answer any questions. I do not want to learn at this time. I don't understand what I'm doing. No promises or threats have been made to me. No pressure or coercion of any kind has been used against me. Okay. And, oh, and, uh, yeah, no problem. Then. And that's it. So, okay. so, if you understand that, if you could just sign here, and then we can get to talking and see that. It would be oh. me here, but you're on the X, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. You got the time and date on there? Yep, yep, okay, yep. Great. I'm going to get it. Yep, I'm going to get that in the case number right here in a second. Uh, let's see here. see. All right, so I got the date as February 19th, 2020. Time is 17.55, roughly. Uh, I'm not sure what time that is real quick. Okay, 1757. Okay. So this will be reference case number 2000, uh, 2020, I'm sorry, dash 3435. Okay, so basically, uh, we'd like to talk to you just about um, you picking up, and the name, can you pronounce the first name for me? I'm sure I'm going to mess Dionis. that up. Dionis? Yeah. Because I've heard it pronounced a couple different ways while doing the like, interviews mm -hmm. and everything. Um, so, yeah, if you could just tell me about that and, and, and what's going on, what the plans were. Well, uh, that day, I mean, on Sunday, she called me, um, saying if I could buy her a ticket, because I, I owed her some money, because uh -huh. I went to Mexico, and she let me borrow some money, and she said if I could buy her a ticket, so I was like, yeah, you know, I'll buy you a ticket for Monday, so I sent her the money, and she sent it right back, she was like, no, you, can you buy it, because I don't want to tell my, my aunt, she was living with her aunt. Okay. And she she, where does her aunt live? Uh, California. Okay. Do you know where? Like San Pablo, California. San Pablo. Yeah. Okay. And I bought her the ticket, and uh, she came on Monday. I picked her up at 8:30, and uh, we took off to uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Tijuana. 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 Yeah. Okay. And our, on our way there, we got pulled over oh. by a cop. Oh no. Mistake number two. Using expired plates. The license plates captured on the casino's CCTV footage were not Rojas's current plates. The plates on the truck at the time had expired two years ago, and it's highly unlikely that Rojas left those plates on his truck accidentally. A more likely explanation is that he was trying to conceal his ownership of the truck in case he were spotted. The expired plates on Rojas's truck belonged to a man from Puyallup, a city 30 minutes away from Rojas's city of Renton, which also happens to be Darkside Phil's place of residence. More importantly, the plates had expired two years ago. Being that Rojas relies on his car to commute to work, it is highly unlikely that he had been using those plates over the past two years without incident. 
A more likely explanation is that he put the expired plates belonging to someone else on his car shortly before he had picked up Lopez from the SeaTac airport. I shouldn't need to say that driving around with expired plates is a mistake. Uh, everyone knows it increases the chance of being stopped while in the midst of your murder plan. Rojas was stopped and let go by a patrol agent whose niceness indirectly caused Lopez's death. Had the officer executed the law, Rojas would be in jail and Lopez would be alive. But that's beside the point. Rojas' use of the expired plates as a way to conceal his identity while driving was a mistake, as police can easily track the plates to a vehicle and then find the current plates for said vehicle, which is exactly what the police did to locate Rojas, the current owner of the vehicle. Thus, the uses of expired plates only tells police that you have something you want to hide. Detectives went to Rojas' house to observe whether the same vehicle was parked outside. It was. And it had the new plates on it. Moreover, the truck looked recently washed. Using expired plates in your murder plan doesn't actually conceal your identity, and it only raises your chance of being pulled over. A better idea is stealing a car or purchasing a car that's untraceable. Yeah, we were almost there, and we got pulled over, and I got a ticket because my driver's license is suspended. Oh. So, but but he let me go, and I got a ticket there. We got there, and uh, she was waiting for some friends. Okay. But uh, they never got there until Tuesday when I dropped her off. Okay, Tuesday. We came back on, uh, well, that Monday we were there. I didn't want to go really, like, into the... Uh, it's called like to the uh, Olympic uh, State Park or oh, the, the, the one that, there's forest, state forest, yeah, or national forest, national forest, national forest. Because my truck isn't all the drive and I don't want to get stuck. Oh, no. So we were just like just driving around the roads and stuff. We came back to the gas station because we were gonna stay like on the side of the roads up there. We were gonna stay there, but it was it was freezing out there. Oh yeah, and it gets cold. Back, this time uh, yeah, we came back to that Chevron that's um, next to the casino. Yeah, sure. Okay. We stayed there and then. Uh, uh, like a couple of, uh, hours later, uh, the security guard came up to us that we couldn't stay there, so we, we left. They kicked you out of the parking lot? Yeah. Really? Yeah, because you can't stay there. So Where were you parked at? Um, like on the side of the, kind of like in front of the, like the market thing that they have there. They kicked you out of the yeah, marketplace the parking lot? Mm -hmm. Did he get by the casino? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, Did he, he give an explanation for that? Yeah, he said that uh, no overnight that you couldn't stay there. You weren't there like overnight? Nah. We how, were how, how long were you there for? Yeah. Mistake number three. Lying about confirmable facts. One goal of lying to the police is to give them believable lies. You want them off your track, off your scent. So make sure your lies are non-confirmable. If your lies can be confirmed as untrue, you'll lose your believability and you'll make yourself more suspicious. Granted, you might not know what evidence the police have against you, so play it safe. Consider simply not answering questions that force you to give a lie that can be confirmed as a lie. Rojas knows that the police have connected him to the red truck. He should logically surmise that the police know the location of the truck at certain time periods, especially given that a security guard interacted with the driver of the truck, that's him, on the night of the murder. Police indeed did confirm with the security guard at the casino that the truck driver was told to leave the marketplace at 12.30 a.m. This means that Rojas did not leave only four hours after arriving at the gas station, but stayed until after dark, damaging his planned alibi of having dropped Lopez off at the park before dark. In fact, all of the questions Detective Waterhouse is asking already have known answers. The detective is currently just testing whether Rojas will lie about the basic information before the interrogation moves on to the death of Ms. Lopez. Rojas here has only damaged his credibility and made himself increasingly suspicious. Yeah, it was, yeah, and then he kicked us out, so we, we he said uh, there was a rest stop like a couple uh, miles down. We, I couldn't find it, so. Which way? Uh, when you come out the Chevron to the, Right. To, oh, yeah. okay, to the right. 
So somebody not near the tribal mm -hmm. stuff? Yeah. Okay. And then I couldn't find it, so I just uh, ended up parking uh, next to like the water. There was a uh, there was like some bathrooms there. I don't know if you guys are familiar over there. So you make the right. So that place is on the left, then. Yeah. There's okay. like some bathrooms there. Okay. And okay. Then, but we parked on the other side and we just stayed there the night and then. then so you get kicked out of the longhouse, but yeah. you don't get kicked out of the, the Jamestown tribal mm -hmm. place. Really? Yeah. Because they're owned by the same oh, really? thing. Yeah. Yeah, because the security. We were just so there. security yeah. never showed up there? No. No. We, oh. we, yeah, we stayed there. Okay. What uh, truck was it? Uh, it was a uh, Silverado. Silverado? And is that your rig? Yeah. Okay. And so where'd uh, you guys sleep in that? Well, uh, is it like a crew cab? No, it's a single cab. Just just like uh, well, just sitting down, we just slept like that. Oh, okay. All right. And then what? And then the next day on Tuesday, she said that her friends were there. Because uh, that Monday night, her phone didn't have service. Okay. But she had a Mexico phone, like a phone number from Mexico. Okay. Because she had just gone from Mexico like a week ago. Okay. And she had that phone. And, like, so I'm a little her. confused. Did she, did she come up with two different phones? Yeah. Because in Mexico, she stayed there like for two months. Okay. And uh, her phone got cut off over here. She was T-Mobile. And okay. she didn't have... No so her U.S. phone is a T-Mobile phone, and she's got one out of Mexico. Is that right? Yeah, she got a okay. yeah, she got a Mexico phone over there. She oh. was there for two months. And that's a cell phone. Yeah. Do you have that number? No. No. No, okay. I just have the number that she used. So the T-Mobile one. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, I guess that's where she was talking to her friends, but I never asked who who they were because I was just okay. I was just like. So you're just the wheel guy. Yeah. Okay. And I was more more uh, more like scared because uh, the the. The state trooper was like, if I see you driving again, you're going to go straight to jail. Right. Yeah, and he took pictures of the truck and everything. And I just, I was like, okay. it's the only red truck here. Okay, all right. And, so, know, I was more like worried about the ticket. How was I going to get back home? Then asking, oh, who, who are your friends were and stuff like that. What? So, she had a plan to meet these people? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, on the ride from the airport here, did she discuss that plan with you? About what she was going to no. do, what the plan was? Did she have anything with her? Mm. Yeah, she just like had belongings? Back, yeah, backpack. Just one backpack? Yeah, it was like a sports bag, you know, those big ones. Those. Like a hiking one? Or are we talking no. like a like a school backpack? Mm -mm, no, it was a... Uh, one with a drawstring? Mm -mm. God, yeah, I'm striking out here, man. I like, uh, <laughs> like, you know those basketball backpacks? Like the long ones? Oh, yeah, like a duffel bag type yeah, thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So was it a square one or was it the brown one? Uh, round one. Round one? And mm -hmm. what color was that? Uh, purple. Purple? Yeah. Were the handles a different color? No, they were black. They were black with yeah. a purple bag. Do you remember what kind of bag it was, Nike, Reebok? Uh, Adidas. Adidas? Yeah. Okay. Anything else? So she got like all her clothes and everything yeah, in there? Yeah, everything in there, yeah. Do you know how long she planned on being? Well, here I, in Washington? I bought the ticket. Okay. Yeah. So was it round trip or was it yeah, one it was round trip. She was supposed to leave on Wednesday. That oh. was uh, 7.30, I think. Supposed, supposed yeah. to leave on Wednesday? Okay. Okay. Uh, what flight was it? I mean, was it like Delta... Whoever, uh, American Airlines? American Airlines, I think. Yeah, because for the, for the, I just bought the ticket and then I put her information and I put her email, so everything, all that stuff went to her. Went to her, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, okay. Do you know where she flew out of? Uh, San Francisco. San Francisco, because San Pablo was where? It's just south, south or east of there or something? Uh, where is San, San, yeah. San Pablo? You, 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 you've never been there? No, I've never been to California. Okay, so what's your relationship with her? Uh, I met her like two years ago. Like two years ago? Yeah, two years ago. How? I mean, it was like two. Through, I met her through a friend, and then we oh. started talking. Okay. And we kind of had a thing, but okay. You know, it was just like. Okay. Well, I I'm married, you know, I got my wife and everything, but right. She she doesn't know about. Like me talking to her and about stuff. this, yeah. right? Yeah, we would talk every day on the phone. We would message each other. We just had a lot of things in common because okay. she was sick and I'm sick. So and did you guys go to school here together? No, no. I met her. Uh, I met her two years ago with a a friend of mine. Oh, uh, so yeah, 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 because yeah, 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 you're 23. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about they that. They used to work together at a Mexican store in Federal Way. You did? No, she did. She did. With who? With uh, her friend Leo. With her friend Leo? Yeah. I don't know. Who's who's that? Uh, it's, well, that's, that's my friend, and I met her through him. Oh, okay. Yeah. Leo's, a, Leo's a male? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you think there's somebody we should talk to? I mean, they stopped talking because oh, okay. he was trying to hook her up with a couple of her friends. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, they stopped talking. 
Yeah. Yeah. So he so yeah. would be useless. That's that's pointless. Did you go to school here? Yeah. Well, let's see. So you've been here in Renton for a while. Yeah. Yeah. I went to school here up in uh, the Highlands. I don't know. Uh, no, I don't. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry, man. I'm I'm way out of my element here. We we're we're way out of here. That's yeah. that's why I was like I'm, I didn't mean to pressure you at work, but you know the whole drive over here. We mm-hmm. had to be over here. I'm like, man, I hope the guy can talk to us because yeah, it's a long drive. Man. Yeah, <laughs> it is. So so did you drive around or take the ferry? No, I drove around. Oh, you, oh, you drove around too. It's Tacoma. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cause you miss a ferry, you're waiting longer. Yeah, oh, yeah. So yeah, and plus those are getting expensive these days too. Yeah, it's like, it's like 35 20, bucks? Yeah. And then coming back, it's well, the Beanbridge one is coming back, is like 16, 60 bucks. What is it going over? Uh, Bremerton, I think. No, I mean, I mean Bainbridge from here over, it's 16? Yeah. No, no, no. Coming back from Bainbridge is 16, uh-huh. but going from Seattle to Bainbridge, yeah, it's like 30. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, I was yeah. like that, unless they changed it. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh man. I'm like, 16 sounds good considering last time oh, I went through. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So, um, so, do you remember what she was wearing when you picked her up or anything? Uh, she was wearing sweats. Sweats? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you, you remember shoes, jacket, what her hair looked like, anything no. like that? No, just she had a like a sweater. That's it. Just in she had a sweater. Yeah. But do you remember what it was? Was the brand on it or anything? No, not the brand. Color? She was like grayish. Grayish. Okay. Yeah. But the sweats were they solid color or patterned or? Mm. Do you remember? No. On your drive from SeaTac to Squim, mm-hmm. um, so you get stopped and think, was there any other stops along the way that you guys made or anything to look at anything or anything? Mm-hmm. No. Okay. No. After I got stopped, uh, well, I was scared. <laughs> I yeah. Know, I, I didn't know how I was going to uh, come back home. Cause the oh, because you, you, yeah. you thought you were going to get arrested maybe? Yeah. And the car impounded? Mm-hmm. And then I also got... And this is a trooper? Yeah. Wow. Trooper. You got really lucky. Oh, yeah. He even Real he lucky. Like, yeah, he's like, hey, I'm going to give you a huge break here. Because <laughs> the truck, the truck, that, uh, the tabs were expired since 2018. So the I tabs were? Yeah, the, the tabs. And it wasn't under my name. And my license was suspended. So was that the justification for a stop? Or were you speeding? No, I was speeding. Oh, yeah. Wow. Was what, speeding. Uh, what did he get you at? Uh, five, five miles over the uh, limit. Five over? Yeah, I think it was a forty-five, and I was going no, it was a forty, and I was going forty-five. For five over. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. So you guys are at the Longhouse, and and I may have missed this, and it's my fault, man. We're so tired from doing mm-hmm. news, man. Yeah. Um, you're at the Chevron mm-hmm. next to the. Casino, which yeah. is the Longhouse. Does that ring a bell? Mm-hmm. Was the plan her friends were supposed to meet you there? No, they were going to meet us like, um, you know, when you come out, you take the left, you pass the casino, and then you um, turn left again. Like there's like a electric thing on the on the side, like towards the entrance to the park. No. Do you remember the road name? No, I don't remember the road name. Do you remember what color the building was or anything? No, it's just a it's a fence, and then in the middle oh, it has like a like a it's like a generator I think. Big oh, one. Yeah. It's on the left. I am losing it. I'm at a loss. No. <laughs> it's like passing the casino. It's like the second road in to your left. How much further past the casino? Yeah. Like half mile, quarter mile, mm-hmm. mile. It's like the best guess. Quarter mile, I think. Oh, oh, so it's not far. Not so. that far from the casino. And then, um, well, they were going to be. Did you pass another hotel or anything? No. On the left? Mm-hmm. Or anything? No. no, my goodness. Huh. Oh, I'll be. No, I didn't pass the other hotel. I don't know, I'm at a loss. <laughs> God, I feel terrible. I mean, I work there. Okay. So, these friends, did she mention how she knew these people, where they're from, Mm-mm. what the plan was? Did she have hiking gear with her? I mean, she has some boots. Oh, she did have boots? Yeah. Like hiking boots type mm-hmm. thing? Okay. All right. My phone keeps going off. Sorry. I was wondering where, I, where I'm at. Okay. So. Okay. And what time is it on Tuesday when you're getting ready to drop her off? Like around 10.30. 10.30. 10, 9, yeah, 9.30, 10.30. 
9 30 10 and 10 and 10 30 okay and did she have um confirmation with her friends yeah, her friend, yeah. okay with, yeah, with she, they were she texting, texting or calling yeah, texting on the on the other phone because the the mexican phone that she had that's where she was texting them because the other phone went out of service okay. Okay. Do you remember what kind of phone it was? Is it Apple or an Android? Mm -hmm. Android. 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 Mm -hmm. which, which phone is that? This Android? The, the Mexican T phone. Oh, Mac. Yeah. What about the T-Mobile one? They were both Android. They were both like mm -hmm. Android. Okay. And how did she seem when uh, when she left? I mean, tell me how that went. How you dropped her off? And I mean, she she seemed pretty good. Yeah, she did get a message from, from her aunt asking her where she was at, and she was like, oh, I'm in Seattle, and that's, that's all. Because her aunt messaged her, I think, so. So she told her she was in Seattle, but she was actually in school, yeah. meeting these people at hype. Mm -hmm. So her aunt had no idea had she was no, meeting yeah, these she people. Was over here, because her aunt messaged her, she oh, told me okay. that her aunt messaged her that, uh, to go turn off the stove, and that's when she told her, I'm not okay. at the house, I'm in Seattle. Yeah, she didn't have a really So good you dropped her off somewhere? Mm -hmm. Without seeing these people? Yeah. And she never called you back or anything? She never called me back, yeah. Oh, wow. And then after that, a couple of days passed, and then this guy named Armando messaged me asking if I knew where she was, and I didn't know him like that or anything. Okay. Yeah, because uh, to her family, she never talked to me or anything. Okay. To her family, I didn't exist, because everything was just like so secretly uh, okay. between me and her. Okay. Yeah. When you say message, are you using social media messaging or are you using text? No, text not the text. Only. Yeah. Were you guys communicating at all by social media? Mm -mm, no. no. Just text? Yeah, just text and call. Okay. And was it always on her personal phone or did yeah, you ever phone. communicate on the Mexican phone? No, not on the Mexican phone. It was always on her phone. Do you have any relatives out here anywhere? She did. She when she was here in Federal Way, she lived with her aunt that lives in Federal Way. Okay. You know what her name is? Mm, no. No. Okay. okay. Have you um, so? Armando called you. Yeah, he messaged me asking if I knew who she was, but since I thought they didn't know about me, I was like, no, I told them I was like, no, I don't know. But then I didn't, I didn't think it was that serious until her mom called me. I mean, she didn't call me, but she messaged me. She was like, oh, are you Alex? You know anything about my daughter? And I was like, I was like, I called her because I, I didn't know it was that serious. Yeah. And I called her and I told her what was going on, what, I, what, what, I, what I had, I mean, no. What? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And who? So who from her family reached out to you? That you remember friends or family? Uh, her mom did. Mom did. Yeah. Do you know where her mom's from? Uh, well, she's in Mexico. She's in Mexico. Yeah. Do you know where? Uh, in Jalisco. Okay. And do you remember what day she called? Uh, Sunday. Sunday or Monday of this week? Oh, most recently. Yeah. Okay. Did you try getting hold of her to find out what was going on? I tried calling her, but her phone just went to uh, straight to voicemail. Straight to voicemail. Yeah. Do you have that number? Yes. Yeah. For her, can you give that to me, uh, please? Two six. And, and were you calling or texting her? Uh, calling. Call. Yeah, because when her mom, I, I spoke with her mom, and I told her, and she was like, "Yeah, she told, she messaged me that she was going to go to uh to the to that uh." that place with some friends yeah so her mom knew about the trip yeah but she she knew uh, that she was gonna go with some friends too okay. do you know if mom was in contact with the friends or knew who the friends no were? she didn't know who the friends were either did she ever talk about who her friends were out there or Names at all, or mm, no? The only the only one that I could think about is when she was living here in Federal Way and with her aunt. Her aunt had a boyfriend that um, that once tried like uh, raping her, but no one knew all this stuff. Like you know his name? 
I just know him by. There's this Mexican restaurant in Kent that got shut down because uh, they were so drugs there, and that's the guy that was so drugs there. That's the guy. Yeah, and he tried uh, drugging her up and raping her, and I mean that's the only guy. Cause he would like try calling her after she left. He would try calling her and calling her and calling her. How, how long ago was this? Like four months ago. When oh, recently. Went, yeah, when she went back to California. Do you do you think he could be one of the guys that was hiking, I mean, or do you think she would just shut sh- shut that down? Mm, no, I think. Well, that's that's my only guess about him, because rather than that, she never told me anything about no one else that she was nothing hiking. else. Yeah. Okay. So is your understanding that she was going to be hiking with female friends or male friends or both? Both. Oh, okay. yeah. I was under impression it was just yeah. female friends. Any um, any idea how how many friends it was? Mm-mm. No, she didn't say, hey. No. Did she mentioned any of the names? No, no names of these people. Hey, I can't wait to see, I don't know. No, because we, we, no, we were both scared of the of the state trooper when we got pulled over. So that kind of quieted yeah, everything down yeah. in the cab? Mm-hmm. So, okay. So when you guys were at the longhouse, did you guys go in or anything? Oh, uh, yeah, I did. And then she went in. And you still got kicked out of there? Yeah. So you're in there buying stuff, and you come mm-hmm. back to the truck. Yeah, and then after a while. And you're getting kicked. Yeah. Did you even show him a receipt or anything? Like, no. Hey, he man, I'm buying stuff. He just knocked in the window and I was like, hey, you guys, got, you guys can't be sleeping in here. I was like, oh, okay. So we left. Oh, so you guys were sleeping at that yeah. point? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Did you guys keep, go to a restaurant or get food anywhere? Uh, we got a hamburger there at the, at the gas station. That's it. Okay. Did she have um, food for the trip, for the hiking trip? Yeah, she had food. Well, I took the food. Oh, what kind of food was it? It was uh, tuna and just like sandwiches and stuff. Yeah. Well, thank God it ain't beer season. Yeah. Because that could go sideways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, was, it was just tuna and sandwiches, that's it. Okay. And how was she equipped for um, water and stuff? Uh, a pack of soda, coca, coca cola. Really? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Did she do much hiking? Was that? Does she do much hiking? Not really. No, Not that I know of. Yeah. So this is these people. Okay. 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 So when when you dropped rock, can you describe exactly like how that went down? Where did she was she just standing along the road and you drove yeah, away? Was she? Uh, going some, walking yeah, we were driving it? around there, and she got a. We had to come back like towards the entrance because that's the only place we would get service. Okay. So we came back, and then she messaged her friends we're like, "Oh, are you guys almost here?" And they're like, "Oh yeah." And then they send her a, a location where um, I don't know. If you, have you guys been in there? And that. Uh, and where? I'm, I'm sorry. What what location are we at? Um, we had to come. We had to drive back to back get to service, where? Uh, like towards to um, the highway or yeah to the highway to okay. get service. And then, like once you once you go back in, there's two ways. There's two ways. Yeah. So we took the one going down, and there's like a river there, and that's where I dropped her off there. Could you? How far are you from the highway then? At that uh, spot, do you know? Just mm, guessing. Probably like. We're taking miles, yards, mm, football field. It was probably like a. Uh, like eight minute drive. An eight minute drive. Yeah. Okay. From the place where we got service. Were you guys on pavement the whole time? Yeah, because I didn't want to get stuck in my <laughs> two-wheel drive truck. I didn't want to get right. stuck. Yeah. And she felt confident that this was the place that her friends yeah. were going to meet her? Mm-hmm. Okay. She didn't seem concerned at all or anything like mm-hmm. that? And did she have all her stuff? Yeah, she had all her stuff. Okay, she didn't leave anything mm-hmm. behind? No. Okay. Yeah. So when you dropped her off, she had both phones? Yeah, she had both. And they're yeah. both working and everything's cool? Okay. Mm-hmm. And was she charging her phones, like, through your car, or how was she keeping her yeah, phones charged? Mm-hmm. Yeah, in the car. Okay. Okay, so they were charged at least when you dropped mm-hmm. her off, yeah. is your understanding? Okay. time do you think it is when you officially drop her off and pull away? Mm, like around 10.30, 9.30. 
9.30 or 10.30? We're trying to get as accurate as we can as far as... It was probably more like 10.30. Closer to 10.30, mm -hmm. you think? Okay. okay. And then what did you do after you dropped her off? Did you stop anywhere on the way? No, I just came back. Okay. And which, what was the route? Did you take a ferry back? No, I went through uh, Tacoma. Okay. Do you know what time you got home? You went home to your house? Yeah. That night, like, um, two. Two, because there was traffic over there by Tacoma. Okay. And no stops on the way back? Mm -hmm. Not even for gas, man. No, because I, I took some uh, gas with me because my gas gauge doesn't work. Oh, you get gas yeah, with you? Yeah, so, uh, yeah okay. so I had gas with me, so I just filled it back up, filled so it I didn't know. Did you have to pull over to do that? Yeah. Where'd you pull over at? On the side of the road. Just before, somewhere? Yeah, before, where? Uh, when I was uh, dropping her off at the, by the river, I just, just dumped the gas in there. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you, you kind of alluded that your wife doesn't know about this. Yeah, she doesn't know so about that. Just a second, sorry. Great. Right. Uh, gets back. We appreciate you yeah. sharing with us. This hopefully will be another piece of the puzzle. You know, everyone seems to have a little bit, and, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Hopefully we'll come to a good conclusion at the end. How are you doing? Do you need water or anything like that? Oh, uh, yeah, I'll take the water. Yeah, feel free. I think they even know. Uh, if you get hungry, they've got, they got some good old farm type stuff in there. Have you been in the wrenching area your whole life? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm from our uh, Paulsbo office. So Paulsbo? We cover um, Mason, Jefferson, Clallam, and Kitsap County oh, over there. So. Yeah, I got family living up in Bainbridge. Oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. 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 Bainbridge is nice, super expensive. Oh, yeah, it's expensive, yeah. Yeah, yeah my grandparents started that restaurant up in the. Bainbridge area. Which restaurant? Casa Rojas. Oh, really? Yeah, that's my okay. grandparents. Okay. Yeah. No desire to go into the restaurant business? Oh, no. No? Yeah, I tried it one time and I was like, oh, no, this isn't for me. Yeah, yeah. I like working outdoors. I mean, I yeah. wish I could be outdoors more than I am, but maybe later on. So you guys have other work lined up um, mm -hmm. later this yeah. week and stuff? Okay. How is business right now? I mean, I mean economy's good. good. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it's pretty good. Coming. Yeah. Good. But I feel really bad that uh, our stop there kind of yeah. caused you guys you freaked out after you guys left. Yeah. Yeah, we were trying to, you know, just give you as much privacy. Mm -hmm. We had, we, yeah, we didn't know that there was going to be someone there, so. How's your dad? Did we freak him out at all, or is he, does he know about the Mr. Oh, that's my, uh, that's my father-in-law. Oh, father-in-law. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So how, how was he after we left? Oh, uh, yeah, he knows it because I told him. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Kids have any kids or anything? Yeah, I got two. Two? Okay. Mm -hmm. Boy or girl? Boys. Okay. What age? Uh, two and then bones in the way. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Sorry about that. What I was going to ask you is, um, knowing that your wife doesn't know about mm -hmm. this yeah. friendship with her, um, what did, where did she think you were for that day or that night? Uh, I just told her I was going to go to work. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you have to go overnight often or? No, I I called her. I was like, because I had told her that I work in Everett. Well, I used to work in Everett, okay. and I told her I was gonna stay over there. Okay, that's it. Okay. All right. Just to make sure we're talking about the same person. Mm-hmm. Which one, sir? Yes. Yeah. This one. Here. 
On the right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you've been really honest with us about everything, man, because, you know, about yeah. the stuff, like the airport, and, and, like, and, I mean, that's your truck, right? Yeah. right? And that's her, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. And then we got, uh, that's her with her seat, buying what you were talking about. Yeah. This is you. Mm-hmm. Right? And then, this is you guys. That's your pickup truck right there. Mistake number four, having a tail. There is a surprising amount of overlap between playing poker and lying to the police. A good detective has been trained, just as a good poker player, to look for tells, or changes in nonverbal behavior that indicate a change in the person's emotional state. When presenting evidence, Detective Waterhouse is looking at Rojas for reactions, and Rojas gives him one. If Detective Waterhouse has been paying attention, Rojas has an obvious tell, scratching his left elbow when becoming nervous. He does this after the detective shows the CCTV image of Rojas and Lopez being at the marketplace long after Rojas has claimed he had left. He also does it earlier when being questioned about how long he was at the marketplace. He will do it later in the interview when encountering other uncomfortable questions. To properly lie to the police, you not only need to have good lies, but you also need to train your body composure to minimize unintentional movements, a skill much easier said than done. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, some of this we were just seeing how truthful you're going to be, man. You've been really truthful with it. Yeah, like I told her mom, yeah. like, you know, whatever I can do, because she was a really good friend of me. And, right. You know, I, right. I barely saw yesterday that they found her body yesterday, and I saw on Facebook, King right. Five. Right. Um, I was gonna call her mom, but I didn't know if she, uh, she knew. If she, if she knew. Yeah, because she kept messaging me and telling me if I knew yeah. her and stuff like that. So, and then her brother messaged me yesterday too, asking if I knew where she was, and I told him, you know, yeah. what I know. Okay. Right. But you again, go in the restroom. Yeah. <laughs> Same glasses. <laughs> yeah, I got Yeah. What, what kind of glasses are those? Oh, oh, are they? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, when I, when I, when I would come here... Yeah, he thought they looked like mine. I've got Oakley uh, oh, yeah. slippers. No, yeah, yeah, what are those? Oh, Nike. Nike? Okay. Yeah. okay, I'm like, Jesus. Nice. So, pick up, pick up truck. Mm -hmm. License plate. There you are working. Yep. Now, I, I had a question about this. Mm-hmm. Look at it. Do there be leg straps on here? Well, yeah, but... Yeah. Who are that high? Yeah, though? see, I was looking at it, and I'm like... Mm -hmm. Brave dude, right there. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, I've done a little bit of something, but yeah. uh, before I had this job, I'm like, shouldn't you have leg harness on there? I mean, it's a good photo. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so yeah. So, so of course, you know, we got that off your Facebook page. Yeah. And you already talked about him. Your wife being mm -hmm. pregnant. That's that's good news. It's good, it's good news. So, you know, so part of this is, you know, is you have been honest with us. And I think you've you've been honest to a point because I think talking about this relationship yeah. with her is pretty it's difficult. Pretty, you're yeah. you're kind of pretty close. I mean, she would tell me everything, and I would tell right. her everything. That's why my wife didn't know about it. This right, time. and that's one of the reasons we we wanted to yeah. talk to you at work and not at home. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. downstairs, I wasn't really sure with this facility where where we should mm -hmm. leave her, which certainly doesn't need to be in on this, yeah. right, to keep it on the down low. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I think part of that is 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 that um, to us looking in it mm -hmm. looks like you guys had a little more of a significant relationship yeah um, I know it's difficult to talk about can but can you can you expand on that a little bit with us I mean yeah because this yeah. one we do it in a private setting yeah. I mean you're in here mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean we just had a thing, you know. Just Where did she want the relationship to go? Right. I mean, well, she knew that I was married and stuff. Right. And did it cause mm -hmm. tension with her? Mm -hmm. or no. Jealousy at all? Mm -hmm. I mean, she knew I was married and, you know, all the okay. stuff. Okay. All right. Yeah. It was more like, you know, like a relation. No, not not a relationship, but like a friendship. You know, really good friendship. Right. That she would tell me, oh, this happened, because she had a lot of problems with her brother. And he lives in California with, I mean, with her, I mean, okay. yeah. Okay. 
Okay, so what I'm going to get into now is just, I don't want you to panic on me, okay? But this is the thing, you've been really, really honest with us, and I want you, and I want you to keep doing that. But obviously we found you today pretty quickly, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Probably like how the hell they find us. Yeah, we, yeah. Because we know certain things, okay? About the relationship and this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I want you to follow me here. I'm not accusing you of anything at this point, okay? Mm -hmm. What we have is phone records. Okay, mm -hmm. that, that back to your story, quite frankly, is you're in SQUIM, right? So you're in SQUIM, no doubt about it. Got you through the longhouse mm -hmm. talking and all this stuff. Got you with tower stuff, okay? So what we're looking at here is green and yellow is you talking to her, okay? Mm -hmm. So your story matches, man. You're in, you're in SQUIM, you're at the longhouse. And this is a tower for, for cell service. This dot is you. This is your phone. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Like, can you see that? Yeah. Go ahead and take it. Yeah, go ahead. So that dot is you. Mm -hmm. So looking at that dot, yeah, you, yeah, you can hold on to that. That's cool. So, and here's another one, but I don't want you to panic on me because of, there's there's uh, there's that. Mm -hmm. So that's the road you're on. Part of what's going on, it took us a while to get here to talk to you, is unfortunately, as you are probably aware, being a guy, a body left up in the woods for a while, critters get to it. Mm -hmm. Body is not in good condition. Okay? I, I, it's really bad from animals from exposure, especially the face, head, anything exposed. Like, are you familiar with that process? Mm -hmm. No, the animals are starving. Well, you are up oh, there, it's cold, yeah. right? They're mm -hmm. up there, they're hungry, it's winter time. Yeah. So that's what's going on. So up there, I I, I, I believe your story, and I actually believe you're a, a little bit of a victim like, in this whole thing. Okay? That may sound a little weird, but I want you to follow me here. I think you were put in a bad scenario. Okay? I, um, by that right there, what I handed you, mm -hmm you're off the beaten path. And that dot is right where we found the body. So we're gonna so we're gonna put this together a little bit and I can tell you a little bit about what I think if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Again, I don't want to scare you to death. Yeah. But I know you got off the pavement. It looks like you guys are probably fighting about something. Got off the pavement, got up there, and I think she was trying to pressure you to leave your wife. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking you guys are sitting up there, and the argument goes pretty bad because you don't want to leave your wife. She's pregnant. you got kids. She's up there, and she's pressuring you to leave your wife, and she gets upset. So what we did find, we find a bottle of tequila. Mm-hmm. With pieces, right? So we got this bottle of tequila. We got pieces. It looks like things went bad, but I think you're the victim of this whole thing. And I'll tell you why, because we found a knife right off her hand. I think you went down, you guys were in an argument, you went down to take a leak to clear your head, I think she followed you from your car with a knife out of your truck that you work in and followed you down there. And I can only surmise what happened then, but I'm assuming, and you can correct me if I'm wrong at some point, but let me kind of finish my theory here because that's kind of why you're not in handcuffs, is I think she followed you down there, you had this bottle, and she pulled a knife on you and threatened you, and maybe she had too much tequila to drink, at which point you had to defend yourself with that bottle, which got busted because she's got your knife and trying to get you to leave your wife. And I can show you that, because... Yeah, because I have, I have two knives, so yeah. Milwaukee and uh, a blue one. Yeah. Mistake number five, offering new evidence. If you have a plan to play the police using the evidence they already have, by all means, that is your prerogative. 
but never offer police new evidence. It might be tempting to make admissions before police bring things up, as doing so makes it feel like you're being honest, but it only feels good. It actually works against you in the long run. We saw this same habit in our How to Spot a Liar video, but the suspect in that video played it a little bit better in that he would make meaningless admissions. Rojas, in contrast, brings up the second knife found at the scene of the crime, a knife that Detective Waterhouse intentionally failed to mention. So not only has he admitted to being the owner of the blue knife found at the crime scene, but he also brought the evidence itself up on his home without police prompting. There is no rational reason for bringing up anything not yet mentioned by the police if your goal is to get away with murder. Yeah, we want the blue one, yeah, because look at this. You see, you see that? that? That's a knife. I believe you're the victim in this because if not, this would be you that I'm looking into. Like I said, that's why you're sitting on a couch. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what it looks like. And I know you don't want to let this go to your wife. That you're up here having this conversation with her, and I get that being a guy, I really do. But I think you're putting in a possible scenario because now it looks like you had to defend yourself from this. And what do you do? Do you go to the cops? That way, your wife's going to find out about this whole extramarital problem and it's going to get exposed at completely the wrong time. Again, that's why you're in here on the couch and not elsewhere. Mistake number six. Believing you're not under arrest. In many cases, when police say they just want to talk to you, they will emphasize your ability to end the interview at any time. Detective Waterhouse does this elegantly by having his suspects sit on a comfortable couch, the number two hero of this interrogation, and constantly reminding his suspects that they are sitting on a comfy couch instead of in a jail cell, implying that the suspects are believed to be innocent. But in many cases, the interrogation is just an attempt to get a confession immediately before the arrest. In Rojas's case, he would be arrested immediately upon refusing to continue the interview at any point. The real reason he's on the couch is to extract a confession, or at the very least, new evidence. Rojas makes the common mistake of believing the police when they say he's not under arrest. For him, Making a few admissions to the police in exchange for being able to leave the police station and continue on with his life seems to be a fair trade. But the police don't play fair, and the good murderer should keep this in mind. Now only you can fill me in on exactly how that went down, but there's basically two options. And like I said, that's why you're on the couch. Mm -hmm. Now, would you be willing to tell me that and what happened up there? Sorry, I, this is not a sticking note on here. This yeah. is just because I told you the animals sure. ate her, yeah. and, and I don't, it, it, it's upsetting to me. I mean, I don't even want to look at it again, basically, is why it's on yeah. here. So I'm hoping you can fill those gaps in for me. That's what it looks like to me. Because you're there. There's only two options. It's either you or her, and we know what ended up and how bad would it look going to the police. I get that, and I get that with your wife. I really do. So if you would please... We've heard she's got a temper, and so, I mean... Mistake number seven. Accepting the police narrative. A common police tactic is to create a middle ground story between your alibi and the truth. Your alibi says you didn't kill anyone. The truth is, you did. The police offer a compromise. Admit that you did kill someone, and we'll craft a story that makes you blameless. We'll say you did it in self-defense. It's tempting to take this offer, because the alternative is to play an all-or-none game, where either you stick to your story that's looking increasingly wobbly in light of the evidence that the police have brought up, or you make a full admission and definitely lose your freedom. Perhaps the middle ground story can exonerate you and pull you out of this stressful situation. After all, it seems that the police are on your side. Or maybe they just don't know the real truth. Don't take the deal. It's a trap. 
Fortunately, Rojas knows this. Doesn't he? Uh Uh-oh. Rojas is scratching his left elbow again. If you would please fill us in on what happened. I mean, and I know you've been truthful. I know you're trying to be as truthful as you can because you don't want this out yeah, there. I, don't I, want, I, don't want I get this. So, yeah. yeah, take a drink of water and then please fill us in so we can exonerate you. That's it. That's why you're on the couch, man. Yeah. So please just take your time. I mean, take, well, a, take a drink of water. We just have everything here. I mean. Well, I need to hear it from you, though. I mean, that's just my theory. But based on what we saw, that's it. The only thing you lied about to us that I can find right now, you didn't tell us you were up there and had this fight, yeah. this argument that led to an impossible scenario. What do you do? Because then you lose like two women, right? Unfortunately, you had to defend yourself. She's unfortunately killed in the process accidentally, right? And then if your wife finds out, bigger problem now, you're out two, uh, two women. Yeah. So if you could just please just take your time and tell us what happened. I mean, well, she, w- she was drinking up there where we stopped. She was drinking. I mean, I told her, you know, take it easy, but right. she just kept drinking. Where'd you guys stop to get the alcohol? I took it. Okay. Yeah, because she wasn't 21, okay. so I took the alcohol. She's, she's not 21? Uh, no, I think she's oh, 20. Oh, she was. Oh, okay. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I took some beer and uh, that bottle, and then she just started drinking. And, you know, she did tell me a couple times that she was going to kill my wife and my kid. What? Yeah. Rojas, get your damn hand off your elbow. If there's any time to suppress your tell, it's when you're claiming that the victim threatened to kill you and your family. See, these are facts that we need to know. I mean, I mean, really. I was pretty scared because, right. you know, you never, you never know what a, a woman can do, you know? Especially like that, that she would lose her mind out of yeah. nowhere. Right. And uh, that day I, I went to the gas station, I called my wife, I called her crying. I was like, hey, you know what, I just want to come back home. I don't want to do this no more. Right. But I, I didn't tell her that I was with her. I just told her, I just told her, I, was, I, just told her, I was like, oh, you know what, Right. I just want to come home. I can't you. even imagine yeah. that. So you're scared, your family, everything. And, yeah, yeah. And, I had I, a, and I get that, man. I really do. I deleted the video, but I had a recording of her telling me that she was going to kill my kid. Really? But I deleted it, I don't know. Yeah. Wow. Oh she, my God. Yeah, she threw me. I just wanted to pause this interrogation at this point to express my love for Detective Waterhouse's almost sarcastic responses to Rojas's lies. Wow. Oh my God. It's like he's trolling Rojas at this point. I would love to see another Waterhouse interrogation, but with a more ridiculous, unbelievable story, kind of like the one we saw in the Psychology of a Control Freak video. I'd love to see his reaction to being told that the victim asked the murderer to kill her. In fact, I'm going to see if I can't reach out to Detective Waterhouse and see if he can recommend some good cases for us to look at of his. And maybe I can get my hands on those and put them up on my channel. A couple times like that and stuff. She knew where I lived. And wow. she would come over here and just park outside. So she's holding you hostage yeah. basically with the information of this extramarital mm-hmm. affair. Yeah. Okay. So so you guys get up there, she's drinking a lot. Yeah. She gets sideways. Tell me tell me tell me about that scenario. Well yeah, she was she just came up to me and we were just talking and then but she was already drunk. It was this Tuesday morning or yeah, Tuesday Monday night? night? Tuesday morning. Okay. What what time was it, you know? Like around. 11, 11.30. 11, 11.30. Yeah. So she's tying it on because yeah. you guys are talking about what you're going to do with the rest of your yeah, life. Yeah, because I had told her, I was like, you know what? Because yeah, you just want to break yeah, off and I she's her, upset. I was like, yeah, you know what? This can't, can't go on. You know, I'm just done with you. And she just started threatening me. Tell me what she said. She what said, like, what did she say to you? She said that she, if, I, if I would leave her, she was going to come to my house and kill my wife and my kid. Is, did she threaten you too, personally? Yeah, she threatened me, yeah. Tell me about that. She said that she, after she was going to go with them, she was going to come after me. Wow. Have you ever known her to be violent before? Yeah. But well, what she would tell me is that she would get into fights with her brother. No, she would okay. just lose it. Okay. So, so walk me through the event that happened so I can see it clearly. I know you guys are that and what happened. Can you, can you can you can you can you walk 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 me through that up to the point where we're fighting? 
Yeah, so, or she's threatening you to yeah, the point where you're having me, to defend yeah. yourself. That's what I want to hear. Well, she just kept threatening me that she was going to kill my wife because she's pregnant and she said, you know what? Is this in the people. car or out of the car? Out of the car. Okay. She said that she was just going to kill her and, you know, the baby that she's that she has. Oh, my God. My yeah, because it's pretty obvious. That's why I said we're going to get her water and everything. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and I knew, obviously, from this. So. Yeah. And she just took out the knife and she just came at me. Oh my and god. She never got me. And where is this at? Right outside the truck. Right outside the mm -hmm. truck? Yeah. Like where like in the parking lot? No. No. Okay, where? The, where you up here. Okay. Yeah. Up in the woods. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So she headed out? Yeah. Left hand yeah. or right hand, you remember? I assume mm -hmm. right, but I don't yeah. know. Yeah, right hand. She just came at me and What actions was she doing? Like what do you mean? Like with the knife. I mean is she, is she coming up to you, like how close is she? Yeah, is she we making move? Yeah, we were pretty close, but when I saw her when she was coming with the knife, so I moved. So she tried to stab yeah, you? she tried stabbing me. Yeah, and she just did, kept... Did she stab you? No, she didn't stab me. Okay, so you have she, no injuries mm -hmm. at all? She just said that she was going to kill me and stuff. She kept repeating So me. what was your response when she tried to stab you? Well, I defended myself. I, I need... I, I know this is painful for you, but I need to know specifics. Well... She because can't. I can't see the body. The body yeah. is destroyed by wildlife. I, I, I don't know except what you do. I mean, there's a little bit that I know, but not a whole lot because of the, the, the desecration of the body, man. It's, it, I don't even want to get into it, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then uh, she, she tried stabbing me, and I moved, and then she came at me again. And then we started, like, like forcing each other. Okay. And then I tripped, and then she came at me again with the knife, so I moved, but she, she just couldn't get me. And then after that, uh, she fell and she hit her head on the truck. And she, because she was already like fainting, I don't know. Because of everything she hit her head on the truck? Yeah. Okay, Rojas is doing well so far. The detective is trying to rope Rojas into a self defense story in which he kills Lopez. But Rojas' story is one of him opening his shooting gun and dodging all of Lopez's attacks until Lopez trips and hits her head on the truck. This story not only clears Rojas of any violence, but it also is somewhat believable, considering that Lopez was purportedly drinking heavily all day with Rojas. Like on the side of the truck. And then from there. And that was it. Where did she hit her head on the truck? Like on the side of the door. Because the, the door was open. Yeah, the passenger side the door was open. And did, what happened after she hit her head? Did that knock yeah, her out? Yeah, that knocked her out. Yeah. And then what happened? Well, I just left. I was scared. I left. You just left? Yeah. Okay. And that's it. So you never actually responded with any force at all? And she's got a knife? Well, just, I just tried, like, pushing her and stuff like that. Okay. Rojas is not playing into the detective's story. As long as Rojas doesn't admit to any violence, the story remains one of a drunken, belligerent woman having a deadly tumble while trying to kill her lover. And if he sticks to this story, he might be in the clear. Okay, but, but, but there's no, you didn't hit her with anything? No, I didn't hit her. At all? Mm-mm, we're just with the bottle. No, Rojas, what are you saying? That's it. Well, tell us about that. Cause you yeah, tell us about that. that. Well, the bottle was in the passenger seat because she had it. So I just grabbed her and I had it in my hand while she was coming at me and then that's when I hit her. With the bottle. You hit her with the bottle. Yeah. That's what I thought because what I'm looking at is a broken bottle, mm -hmm. not a whole bottle. Um, yeah, that I know this sucks to have to answer, man, but we got to yeah. exonerate you here, so we need to know how that bottle got broke. That's, yeah. I mean, I can make assumptions, but I need you to tell me so it matches up with what I'm looking at because mm -hmm. that's it. So if you're, let's say you're in the driver's seat, it's is she? No, we're outside the truck. Oh, you're outside yeah. of the car. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then where where did you hit her? What part of the body did the bottle hit? Oh, just on her head. On her head. Okay. Yeah. Where at? Like on this side. Like on that yeah. side, the side of the head, and, and that's when it broke. Mm -hmm. Did you just hit her once? Yeah, just once. Okay. And that ended the fight there at that yeah. point. And yeah. And then I just left. And then you left her in the woods. Mm -hmm. So did did you, earlier you said her head hit the door. So did you hit the door and get hit yeah. by the bottle? Mm -hmm. So two things happened? Yeah. Okay. Okay. That makes sense.
makes no more sense. But how did she how did she get from the truck into the woods? Well, I just pushed it over there because I was I mean I was scared. I didn't know what to do. Okay. Okay. And well, tell us what happened. After so this that. red knife is definitely yours. Yeah, that's mine. That was in my truck. So. Okay. Yeah. And you had another knife, I recall you saying, is that mm -hmm. right? Yeah. What is it? Or do you have it? Do you, no, do you no. have that knife? No. You said a blue? Yeah, a blue knife. You got a blue knife? Mm -hmm. you know what brand that was? No, I didn't have a brand. Okay. Okay. So what, what happened to her stuff then? Because her stuff wasn't with her. Well, just had them in my truck and I threw them away. I mean, uh, at that point, I didn't know what was going on. You're kind of freaking out. Yeah, I scared. Freaking yeah. out. Yeah, I can only imagine, man. Yeah, you've yeah. been through quite, quite a, quite a bit here. Where did, where did you throw the stuff? At the, at my house. Just put them in a black bag and just throw them away. You throw them away? Mm -hmm. Except for this one, right? This red one. No, no, I was talking no, about her stuff. clothes, like yeah. her oh, duffel bag. Her clothes. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you sorry, took that I missed back that. to the house. Yeah, because I had it in my truck. Yeah, I just threw and it away. You put in a black plastic bag and threw mm -hmm. it. Um, in like garbage cans or yeah. Okay. In the house garbage can. Yeah. Okay. 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 Wow, that's that's quite the adventure, and you've had to live with this too the whole time, yeah. Owen. So you knew she was likely dead. Well, not likely dead. I don't even know if she died or not until I saw yesterday. Uh, until you saw her. yesterday. So you left her up there, like, knocked out? Yeah. Okay, and didn't go back or anything? Mm -hmm. no. You thought about, like, just calling someone to, like, have them, like, Knocks check out. on I mean, her? I was, I was scared. I, mean, I didn't know what to do. Yeah. 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 Was there any thought that maybe she would recover and come after you? Yeah. I did think that. Tell me about that. But that was that be, thought go through your mind at yeah, all? Yeah, she was going to come back, yeah. Were you prepared for that? Mm -hmm. Does she know where you live? Yeah, she, knew, she knew where I live. How does she know where she lives? I don't know. Because I would assume you wouldn't have her own over at your place. With no. The, with, with your, with yeah, your, with my wife now. Your wife or something, no, you she, know. She would follow me. Oh, yeah, oh well, know. tell us about that. Yeah, yeah, so now she's following you around. So is she stalking you? Yeah, when she lived here, yeah, she, she oh, would follow me around. Yeah, so like when she, did you become aware she knew where you lived? Until she told me. When did that happen? When she left to California, she said that she knew where I lived and let her Did she confirm it? Did she show you anything? I Mommy, mean, she just told me you live at this house and it's like this and this. So she described house. your house to you? Mm -hmm. With address number and everything? Yeah, or not with address number, just described my house. And I was like, well, that's my house. How did that make you feel? I was scared. So now you're living in fear that she could show up at any mm -hmm. moment, yeah. like at your doorstep. Yeah, she would uh, she would have stalked my wife too and she would send her messages too. Okay. But with the fake, uh, fake Facebook though. Oh my God! Do you remember what what name she used for that? Uh, she had several. She had several. Do you know which one she used for sending messages uh, to your wife? I'm not sure. My wife probably remembers because she had more money than me. No. Oh, so. Okay. Yeah, that's got to be terrifying to live with. So her her duffel bag you got rid of. Um, mm -hmm. What about her phone? Her two phones? Do you know? No, I didn't take the phones because she had them with her. Mistake number eight. Ignorance of cell phone towers. Rojas has already been told that he was located via phone GPS. He should therefore know that lying about the phone locations will not deceive the police at this point. In fact, Rojas took Lopez's two phones with him after the murder and threw them away in different spots. Rojas has changed his story so many times that he's probably confused himself. At first, he was attempting to convince the police that he simply dropped Lopez off in the woods and didn't know what happened to her after that. Then his story is one of Lopez falling against the truck and Rojas just leaving her there unconscious. His next revision was having hit Lopez with a tequila bottle, panicking and then throwing her possessions away to cover his tracks. And now he's denying to know where some of her possessions are and he's doing it for one of the most easily tracked objects. He's lost the plot. So the phone should be in the woods? Or? Yeah, I don't know what happened to the phone. I didn't yeah. think the phone, I just took the bag that was in the truck. And but it wasn't in the bag? No. Okay. I just when I dropped her off, when I took her over there, I just left with the backpack in there. I didn't want to 
Went back, yeah. so, okay. Was there anything else that you got rid of beside the duffel bag? No, that was it. Mm -hmm. Did did she? If we back up a little bit, did you guys or did she change clothes at some point? Because the clothes that she's wearing in the woods is different than yeah, the airport she portal. Did. So tell us about that. Where did you guys? Where did she change clothes? In the truck. Oh, we in the truck. When we were sleeping at the. Oh, at like, oh, the rest area thing there, Jamestown. Okay. Okay. And, it, and did the clothes she was wearing in the airport photos, did that just go back in the duffel bag? Is that what you mm -hmm. understand yeah. at least? Well, well, thanks for being honest with us. If, if you don't mind, i got to step out one more time, man. I'll tell you what, man. Just... He's restroom. Can we get you anything? I'm good. Yeah, can you get anything? Yeah, give me just a minute. I'll be back. We'll wrap this up. We'll get you out of here, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, great. Yeah, so just give me just a minute. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. How you feeling? Um, you all right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. 
Not much longer. So is, is, is the duffel bag still at the house? No, the garbage can is on Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday last week? Yeah. Okay. And you're pretty sure that the phone stayed? Yeah, they stayed alive. They were just the back of those up in the truck. That's yours? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was in the truck, too. was in the truck? Mm -hmm. Like, where out in the truck was that? Um, it's all by the, uh, in the, by the lights. By the lights? Yeah. And where was the red one at? Uh, that one was, uh, on the, on the passenger side. The passenger the side door, door like yeah. the little map mm -hmm. pocket yeah, right thing? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, because I would always put it there, because uh, that's where I, uh, I had my harness and stuff on the passenger side, the back seat. So I would, I would always have it there. Here. Is that from anything or what? Yeah, probably the east right here. What do you think that's from? Well, she tried scratch I'm probably scratching on the tail. I also have one right here in my treasure. I don't know if Okay, give me one second. We need to set up their hand and then what I'll have you do, I'll, I'll just have you lift your shirt up. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, go ahead. Well, let me look right here. Let some scratches on them. Okay. Looks like, uh, like your wife's name up there. Yeah. At the top. Okay. Uh, can, can, I, can I have you just stand up just, just so I can get the back and everything? Yeah, back. If you can just, oh, lift oh, 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 my yeah, shirt up? Yeah, yeah, lift your shirt. Yeah, I want to see what's up here. Oh, that's cool. Do you know if um, she had any tattoos? Uh, just on her hand, just one. Okay. Any other injuries, any legs injuries, uh, anything like that that's from her? Mm, no. Mistake number nine, having a crutch. Rojas has kept his sunglasses on like a poker player during the whole duration of this interview, which is a little weird. But maybe he's just one of those really cool people who wear their sunglasses indoors all the time. I used to see them in nightclubs on occasion. 
But the fact that Rojas's first action after sitting back down is to reach for his sunglasses is telling. He's using his sunglasses as a comfort device, as a way to distance himself from the detectives. His sunglasses are to him what a pacifier is to a toddler. The problem with having a crutch like this is that you cannot rely on it. This is especially true for Rojas, who has been submissive to the detectives during the whole interview. If the detectives had asked Rojas to remove his sunglasses, he most certainly would have, and I'm sure his elbow scratching threshold would have become even lower. If you have a crutch, make it invisible. At the risk of getting a little too personal here, my dad used to hit me when I was a kid, and for some reason, when he hit me, I would laugh, which would only anger him further, causing more hitting. But I learned that if I bit my tongue without opening my lips, I could stop myself from laughing. I found a crutch that couldn't be seen. Rojas probably is weak to direct eye contact when he's lying. Many people are. Sunglasses are a common crutch. Even Casey Neistat uses them. But such crutches are not advised for aspiring murderers. A better crutch for a person like Rojas would be training yourself to not look at the person's eyes, but the spot between their eyes. If you focus on that spot, the person will believe that you're holding eye contact when in fact you're not. Find your weakness and develop an invisible crutch if you don't want to be the fool reaching for his sunglasses and scratching his elbow whenever you're asked a tough question. I almost said sunglasses. I've been in Japan too long. Okay. Um, I'm not sure that took. Let me check my thing. I might want to flash. I don't know. Yeah, I may have to redo it. This is some quality acting by Detective Waterhouse and the FBI agent. Waterhouse had just taken a picture of Rojas' back and says the picture might not have been taken well. The FBI agent chimes in with a, yeah, you might want to use a flash. This conversation was scripted and was most likely discussed a few minutes ago when the detectives had left Rojas in the room. It might not seem that way, but it was for sure. You'll understand in a bit why this is the fact. But for now, think of it like this. The photo taken was fine. If it wasn't, he would have taken it again. The problem is this. The interrogation room, it's just too comfy. This isn't the standard read technique setup, which usually has a table blocking the suspect's means of exiting the room, also uh, usually a table between the suspect and the detective. Rojas right now, in his position, if he so wanted, could easily stand up and rush at the door, possibly overpowering the detectives. So while this room certainly works for Detective Waterhouse's that's why you're sitting on the comfy couch strategy of making the suspect feel at ease. It's not exactly suitable for arresting suspects who might resist, such as murderers. So the skit you just saw play out, a very short skit, was very important because it was the setup for the arrest. And Rojas, as well as most people watching this, is completely unaware of this. So you think the injuries on the forearm might have been from... Yeah, scratch, scratch, scratch. Yeah. on your hand there, mm -hmm. okay. Okay, let me check, make sure this went on there. Oh, I'm sorry, did, did she have any tattoos that you know of? I just saw one on here. She had an do, you, do you know what it said or anything? It was like an airplane. An airplane? Yeah. Mistake number 10. Lying needlessly. Every lie should have a clear purpose. Otherwise, you just look like a compulsive liar and lose your credibility. Rojas's lie here about the tattoos on Lopez's body makes little sense. From his perspective, he's likely trying to distance himself from Lopez, as he's already in that mode, off the brink of denying any involvement with the injuries on her body. I think he's acting semi-automatically here because his lie not only makes little sense, but it makes him seem somewhat stupid. Lopez had three tattoos on her body. A large tattoo of a woman and two children on her left shoulder. An infinity sign with a feather and the word life on her right ankle. And a name with a date tattooed on her right wrist. 
A man who's been in an intimate relationship with a woman for over three years should know about her tattoos. Moreover, mistaking the tattoo of a name and a date for an airplane is quite silly. If I were dating a woman with an airplane tattoo on her wrist, I'd be quite interested, as that's a rare tattoo for a woman to put on her wrist. I'd want to know the story. And then when someone asked me about it, say, in an interrogation room, I'd have a surefire answer. But Rojas just says, it was like an airplane, which is the way you talk when you're not sure of something. So why lie about this? Or did he just think a name and a date really looks like an airplane? Perhaps Rojas has realized he's too deep at this point. He's too deep in his lies, and he's building an insanity defense. Your Honor, my client might have told the police that he hit Lopez with a tequila bottle, but can you really trust the words of a man who sees word and letter combinations as airplanes? The lawyer then holds up pictures of all the big pop bands in Japan, AKB48, Nogi Saka 46, whatever. Mr. Rojas, uh, what do you see here? Those are airplanes. The man is clearly insane. I rest my case, Your Honor. What about the clothes you were wearing? Did you get any blood on yourself at no. all? No. Okay. Do you still have the clothes that you were wearing? Or? No, yes. Yeah, like uh, some gray uh, jeans. Okay. They're still at the house, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You didn't get rid of them? Okay. Shoes, were those the boots you were wearing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are the boots I was wearing. Okay. Yeah, Rojas is going for the insanity defense here. No, those are not the boots Rojas was wearing, as the surveillance footage that the detectives just presented to Rojas clearly shows. What is he doing? Why is he lying about this? he's got to be going for the insanity defense. I mean, there's no other explanation here to lie about something so demonstrably false. All right, yeah, I'm probably gonna have to take that back shot again. Sorry about that. It was, yeah. it was pretty terrible. It's not great lighting in here. No, it's not? Okay. Sorry about that. Good. All right, you want to put your shirt back on? Yeah, okay. Stand up, turn around, put your hands behind your back, you're under arrest. That was pretty smooth. Let's watch it again. Pay attention to the following. First, the presumption is that the back picture needs to be taken again, which only requires Detective Waterhouse. Yet, the FBI agent also stands up while the picture is being taken. Detective Waterhouse doesn't take a picture, but hits the home button on the phone to let the FBI agent standing behind him know that it's time to make the arrest. He also turns his head to make eye contact with the FBI agent. The detective then puts the phone away so that its hands are free, and the FBI agent comes around to ensure that there is no struggle. Overall, really smooth acting from the detectives to set up an eventless arrest in a room that is more advantageous to the suspect than to the detectives. Let me get these tight on you, okay? Make sure they're not too, uh, too tight. Do you have any weapons on you at all? No. Any knives? Any mm -hmm. keys at all? Mm -hmm. okay. So you got a phone and a wallet yeah. on you? Okay. Anything inside your booth? Mm -hmm. Put tight socks, okay.
and no thought of like you know just calling 911 anonymously and saying hey there's a woman up for me. I mean at that when that thing happened I mean I just I could just think of just going home. I didn't think of nothing else. Yeah, I mean that's a long ride home, yeah. a couple hours. Yeah. Your mind's got to be just racing at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was there any thoughts on the ride back or anything? Yeah. Yeah. What? What? Yeah. Tell us what was going through your mind. You know, on the right. ride back. Um. But that that uh, what ha happened? It wasn't like a good ending. I rather, it was not. I rather just her like tell my wife that I was I have something with her than that. You know. Right. Yeah. Nobody wants that. And then after that, you know. I mean, life changed. Because now, uh, look at that now. I'm in handcuffs now and I got two kids that I left. Yeah. You know? It was her or me. Yeah. There's nothing else you think we should be looking for forever for evidence to help exonerate you or anything? anything else that would help? Um, uh, no. Now's just, the time. Now, I mean, we just, you can ask my wife, I mean, she would like send her stuff and, and stuff like that. Okay. So, okay. Is your wife out here with you? Yeah, she's out there. Yeah, she's out I mean, can I say bye to her at least? Or? It could be his boss's call, so right. we'll, we'll have to, I mean, you're going to end up seeing her again, you know, and stuff like that, but, uh, yeah. I do need to get another bottle of water out there. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know how she's going to take it because her duty was like in two weeks. Right. That's what we so got I from the I Facebook I thing. Yeah. I, I, don't I know. Want the timing is awful. Too, you know? I know. The timing yeah, is awful. We've, we've had like five miscarriages. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah. And Jeff, I'll hang in here once you check with them. Okay. See. That sounds good. 7.05 right now, just so you know what time it is. So why, did you, why does your wife think you're here tonight? Because I took a... I just told her I gave someone a ride to go over there and not say it. Okay. She had any suspicions at all that you're, you were having an affair? Mm, no. No? Mm -hmm. Did you guys have sex at all that night on that trip? Yeah. You did? Yeah. Did you use a condom or? No, because uh, she couldn't have kids. Okay. She couldn't have kids. Mm -hmm. um, when did you guys have sex? Was that? Um, that was Monday. Monday, Monday night? Yeah. Okay. Was that the, by the longhouse or is that after you guys went and camped for the night? Yeah, that's after we camped, yeah. Okay. I assume that's when the clothes change happened? Yeah. Okay. So, where, where did were you things going? Okay, at that point? Yeah, at that point, yeah. It was, uh, until, that was until Tuesday morning when I told her, you know, that we were done. Yeah, and that's when she flipped out. So, we're always getting news. So, but where did the tequila bottle, you said that came from you? Mm hmm Did you buy it anywhere? No, it was at the house. Yeah, you had it at your house? Yeah. And it was, was it a recent purchase or? No, it was just one of the leftovers from a party. Okay. So how long have you had that bottle for? Well, like five months. Okay. And her phone was left there? Yeah, yeah, I didn't grab the phones. She had them in her pocket. Okay. But I just had the, the bag that was in the truck and okay. that's it. Okay. Now, this is cell phone data? Mm-hmm. This shows you going from SeaTac out there and back. What it also shows is her phone with your phone. That's why there's two two and two dots. The satellite keeps it and going back to your place. Would you please tell me where her cell phone is? 
So I threw, I threw them away. You threw yeah. it away? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was in the duffel bag? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because mm -hmm. yeah, we got the information coming and yeah. we get it and that's it. Are you sure they were in the duffel bag? Yeah, they were in the how do you, that's how you, do you know they were in the duffel bag? Because they saw them. You saw them? Yeah. Okay. Did, did anybody else see them? Mm-hmm. Okay. And when you say throw them away, you threw them away at your house? No, I didn't throw them away. I threw them away just on the side of the road. Just threw them out. On the side of the road where? Uh, here in Renton. Here in Renton? Where in Renton? Uh, I threw one away over there, like on the side of the road, and the other one I threw away at 7-Eleven. Uh, That's here in Renton. At 7-Eleven? Yeah, garbage can. What's 7-Eleven? Mm -hmm. What street? Um, I'm not sure about the street, but it's the one close to my house. The seven on Christy yeah. House has whose phone? Your, your, I um, mean her, her, her phone? Yeah. Which one, do you know which one you threw where? No, I didn't, I, no, I didn't know. I just grabbed it. I just threw one over, away over there on the side of the road. The other one here, so Where's the other one on the side of the road at? Uh, it's, I don't know the street. I know, I know. I know Is it on this side of the water? It's, it's, it's in Renton? Yeah. Could you take us to that phone? I mean, if it's still there, yeah. yeah. I just threw it out. No, so I was driving one. I threw it out. Okay, but can you, is there any landmarks nearby where you threw it out at? Like in another gas station? No, it's a school. I mean, the school's That's, by in there. The school? Which school? I don't know the name. How far is it from your house? Is it a middle school, high school? Uh, it's a uh, high school. It's a high school? Mm -hmm. Is it the one you went to? No. A different one. A different one than the yes. one you went to? Mm-hmm. Um, but it's near your house? Like, how far from your house is it, if you had to guess? Ten minutes. Ten minutes from your house. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what the school looks like? Yeah. Do you know the name of it? It's like Ken Kenridge, something like that. Kenridge. Yeah. So if I were to try to find this phone, where would it be? On the side of the road. Uh, In front of the school, side of the school, no. back of the school. Like it's like the school is on the on the light, and then you go down like a hill, and they're like building some houses on your right and somewhere around okay. there. So I threw it away. So you do it on the right side where they're building mm -hmm. the houses, like yeah. in a ditch. No, I just it's like. Forest there. I just oh, just when you get out there? Okay. You know what the phone looks like? They were both the same. So both just a yeah, Motorola, a Motorola yeah. droid yeah, or something? Yeah. They were both the same. Okay. But the other one was thrown out in the garbage can at a 7-Eleven mm -hmm. your house, yeah. like, like a big dumpster? No, the ones that uh, are yeah. at the gas station. In the yeah. store? No, 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 outside. Oh, outside. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. outside. Oh, okay. Yeah. By the gas pumps. Okay. So Did they have a case on them or anything? Mm -hmm. no? No, no. So case. no case, just and that's why they look the same, both of them. Oh, yeah. So, so are you sure which one went where? Mm, no, I don't know which one. You're here, not sure if the T-Mobile one yeah. went out here or the mm -hmm. other one there. Yeah, because they're both the same. They're same both one. the same. So there never were friends that were meeting her. No. no. Yeah, we didn't think so. I mean, just based on it. Mm -hmm. Well. Thanks for cooperating with us and talking to us and what have you about it. And yeah. I'm sure it's got to eat, eat away at you for a while, you know, just the fact you had to do that. No matter what anybody else thinks, just the fact you had to, you had to do that. It's pretty bad. Yeah, so, okay. I don't think I have anything else. We'll do the time. Yeah, so, I don't know where the date and the time is. It's going to be the same date. It is February 19th, 2020. Time is now 7.14 or 19.14. I'm going to step out and try to shut this off. The rest of this case, as pertains to Rojas, is pretty uneventful. We have the detectives collect DNA evidence and take him away to jail. Then Rojas's wife is called in. And, uh, of course, they play quite gentle with her until revealing what Rojas has done. I don't think any of the interview with the wife is particularly interesting, but I'll leave in the reveal, at least at the end, for those who are interested. So before we get to that, let me give my conclusion and shout-outs here, and you can stick around for the interrogation of the wife if you so choose. Conclusion. If you couldn't tell, the format of this video was satire. I'm not actually giving advice on how to kill, and my brother-in-law similarly wasn't telling me how to get away with murder either. 
the whole point here is that those who do murder tend to be too dumb to get away with it. They make too many mistakes and they give in too easily to police tactics. Their stupidity is good, for society at least, because they deserve to be locked up. That's my conclusion. The end. Now for the shoutouts. Um, shout out, of course, first to my Patreon members because not only do they give me financial support, but they also act as a sort of quality assurance for my videos before I publish them to YouTube. If you want to join the fray, please check the description below. Uh, a new shout out to Chris James, a better YouTuber than I am. He has a unique niche of critiquing garbage TV shows. I see many opportunities to make fun of idiots in my videos, and I look to Chris James for examples of getting humor down without being outright cruel. Give his channel a watch if you get bored of true crime content. Um, as for trading stuff, I want to give a shout out to Nancy Pelosi's husband, who is possibly the best trader who's ever lived. Somehow he just always knows what's going to happen in the future and is able to get ahead of retail traders and trading it. I can only wish one day to be as good as a trader as he is. Finally, shout out to you, the viewer, who is 90% likely to not be a subscriber to my channel. I appreciate the view, at least. Um, yeah. Now let's go on to the interview with Rojas's wife. Um, so I went and talked to the guys to find out um, what they knew. And so we were able to confirm that the person that um, was found deceased up in woods is the same person that he was seen. Oh, so she was... It's the same person. So she was on... Dead. Dead? Yeah. Yeah. And he was the last person to see her. Okay. And what does that mean for him? Um... Is he being detained? He's currently under arrest. So is he not here in the building anymore? Um, he is. He's here. And he's talked about what happened. Okay, and he's more involved than what he shared with you. How involved? He's under arrest for homicide. He admitted to it. You're lying to me. No, I'm sorry, I'm not. I'm not. You told me mom. Okay, so um so oh. okay. No he did it. Okay. So he he's he's cooperated. Um we're gonna be doing a search warrant to gather some items from the house. No, you're lying to me. No, I wish I was. What did he do? Well, he was involved in her death. With the guys? Uh, there was no other guys. Stop it, you're lying. No. Uh, can I see him? I, I would, I would, I would, I wish I was lying to you, but I'm not. Okay. Stop, stop, stop. He, he told the guys what happened. 
No. No, 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 no. Okay. Yeah, I, w I wish, I wish it wasn't. No, please, no. Thank you. I just want to get it on there. Okay. My notes. Am I able to call my mom? 